Hello, you're listening to Hibs Talk. I'm your host as always, Gav. Joining me today is Dave. All right. And Stephen. Hello. Have a good Christmas, guys. Yeah, it was good. Just chilled, family time in there. Yeah. yeah. Aye, it was good. It's, it's that kind of... Until I think until we'll have um, kids ourselves, it's kind of we're in that stage where we've got to split our day up. So it was Becca's family for the first half of the day. And, and just so you, you get somewhere and you're like, oh, I can't be bored moving. Uh, but no, it was a really good day. Uh, yeah, both were good families. So yeah, it was really good. What were you, Stephen? What did you get up to Christmas Day? I was up at half two. <laughs> half two? <laughs> yep. Was that the kids getting up ready for Sa- to see if Santa's No, been? that was them getting up to the toilet. Or was that you getting up to see if Santa had been? No, that was them getting up to the toilet. But, like, because the doors are, like, glass panels, I had to, like, carry them down with their back to the door, to the toilet, carry them back. And then I was that paranoid that they would get back up again. Like, I was <laughs> up at night. They went to sleep again. They were up at 10 to 6. But I was up since half two. Did somebody go for a wee post meal snooze on the sofa after that then no i never slept till you fired all the way through never slept till half 11 that night and then i was back up at four again on boxing day wow. for work what were you dave good christmas day though yeah no Played details in that no details nah no. you get anything nice interested. Eh? you get anything nice um, I well, my wee sister went to america and got me a, a seattle sounders top oh that's cool i wanted a green adidas mls mm. football team Portland Timbers is the best one to get for a few years ago because that's got the white sleeves. Aye, aye. Yeah. But um, so she got me the Seattle Sanders one, so it was very cool. No yeah, really cool. Lie. Very cool. Brilliant. Aye. Uh, the best. Uh, the best gift I got, which I actually wasn't a present for me, Rebecca got from her for a secret for Santa from her work. It's um. I don't know if you've ever heard of a Raspberry Pi at all. Some people have heard it. Some of you have won't. That listening. It's basically like a little computer thing, and you can program stuff on it. And he programmed this retro pie thing on it, and it's basically it's a little tiny box, the size of a um, box of matches, and it's got fifteen hundred games like Sega Mega Drive games, Super Nintendo games, Nintendo sixty four games, a few PlayStation one games. So I've been spending the last few days playing that. It's been brilliant. Aye, just old school gaming. Oh, aye, really, that's some really good. What was the uh, the, to- the Toy Story game? I was playing that. Oh, Toy Story! You collect aye. the wee tokens and that. Yeah, oh aye. my yeah, god. A bit of Final Fantasy seven as well. You got that didn't steal the name. Aye, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hearts of Shite. It was a great game, yeah, right? Who knows? Play Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's get on with the derby then. Uh, just brilliant. Yeah, this put them back in their place. Yeah, I wish I was there. Mm, aye, aye. Had to uh, work, you, you, you work retail. I, I tried to get a ticket and couldn't, unfortunately. So I had to. Me, my dad came round though. We watched it on the telly here, which was great. Um, but I, so I just, oh, I guess we're going to go get, get started with the game. I mean, Scott Allen, um, that ball into the box. Did he mean it? Mm, oh, nah, well, probably not. But it was just probably more instinctive, like knowing that somebody would be there. Would be. Yeah. I wonder if he thought it would. Dodge would be there mm. rather than Boyle but he, he's Play always a good job was Dodge wasn't there to be fair <laughs> Dodge has scored 7 goals this season it would, would, would have ended up through his legs let's be honest <laughs> if um, <laughs> if he knows that somebody's going to be there on that but I just put it in a perfect area so I suppose you could see when ball. he hit it he did look over his shoulder so yeah. I think he, he was just hitting it into the area in the hope that it was somebody that would be there I don't think Boyle was the but target but we'll, we'll, well, well, well done well, well done take it though great start area, so. five minutes for 1-0 up exactly. couldn't believe it no. it's just um, brilliant and, and he took it really well yeah uh, his finishing has come on quite a bit and I, I liked how he done a wee nay slide uh, towards the Hearts fans and that aye brilliant aye love him enjoyed that so I guess from that we can kind of talk about the team selection we did stick with the diamond we're a bit unsure when the team came out is it going to be a 4-5-1 is it going to be a diamond we did play the diamond Camberry apparently a knee injury so was out and Boyle played up top and definitely worked you know you look at the how we've kind of looked at how Hearts set up we've seen that their, their, their flaws in their defence and we've taken advantage of it with Boyle pretty much playing on his shoulder the whole game yeah I don't normally like Boyle up top either I like him at wide but we've obviously been a narrower pitch you kind of you didn't get the benefit of the wing, wingers there so mm. I, I don't think that would work at Easter Road doing that the same I think he is better further wide but he done really well to be fair to him yeah. um, but I, you never spoke about Naismith's tackle in the second minute no I didn't know that's the best. Talk about that. that's like a goal in itself <laughs> well you need them for the aye. start aye, aye. aye. Uh, it, sent, it sent, sent that early message that we were here aye, aye. and then it followed up with the goal uh, the two of them were brilliant in the post-match interview both the one that went out and the outtakes that also went out which was brilliant um, but you know so it's great to see Ross you know 
looking at the tactics, looking at how his heart's set up, seeing that they're trying to do this gig and press, whatever it's called, and they've not got the defenders for it and taking advantage of that and putting Boyle up top. I think it's, it is it's back to the point where beforehand, like when he was playing up top, he never had the the end product, like he wasn't able to finish. But I think, as a lot of people have said this season, his finishing's got a lot better, and that was the like the missing link to his game. Like he's got the pace, he can take it around the player. His crossing's got better, mm-hmm. um, but cutting inside and being able to finish like that as well, like first touch is unbelievable now, and that's it, what makes a difference. If we ever get the opportunity to interview Martin Boyle which fingers crossed one day but um, I'd love to ask him what he's been up to whilst he's been injured you know has he been watching stuff has he been learning about the game you know off the ball and stuff because his final ball you know like you say his finishing and his crossing has improved so well, much he's been watching his misses eh I <laughs> <laughs> think some lessons from her um, but yeah so I mean that was great to see and then obviously <laughs> we talked about Scott Allen did he mean it did he mean it to try and score for the corner well, again, probably no, but that's what you want. You want the boss to go into a dangerous area. And a very dangerous go, ball. If they go yeah. right through, then that's, if you do that kind of mainly for free kicks for an angle, you always aim mm. at back post, and if mm. everybody misses, it's going to cause the keeper a problem. But If it was a wee bit lower and it was on target, it was going in because um, I think it was Hickey that was on the line, jumped and was nowhere near it. So, yeah, um, I brought it to see. But yeah, um, and we spoke about, you know, we spoke about just a minute ago about Hearts Gigan Press or Yegan Press, whatever it's called, and we spoke about um, in the, the Derby preview article we done, but it was Alan that was doing it, he was pressing up high, forced them into an error, and it was sort of like with the tackle that he, he played the pass with the ball, uh, Boyle sort of seen the, the gap between Halkett and Berra, was ready for the ball coming through, and, and went and scored a second, like say, a really can finish. Yeah, really good for Scott Allen to mm. press him, because I think it was Demur. Yeah, can he dilly dallies on the ball and then die straight in? And if you watch it back, you see that Boyle is, you know, on. He's like almost like like ready for on a, on a hundred meter sprint, ready for the the, the the you know anticipating the ball coming through. And Berra's standing really relaxed, thinking he's like watching the game yeah. in front of him rather than ready for the race. And obviously, Boyle's going to beat Berra in a race every day of the week, but that just gives him that extra bit and whilst we're doing some better bashing he also gave up on the goal before Boyle even hit he knew it was in you know Boyle just took that touch to the right and you see better just stop and give up and his arms already go love to see it yeah <laughs> I watched that back a few times he, he's he's went <laughs> yeah like, he's completely gone like you talk about players that are away and people say like Hanlon's done or Stevenson's done or that. it's not even like in the same like Planet. wavelength no. as the better argument he has done mm. like completely They'll yeah. play every week. That's the, that's the best. It. I, I'd imagine. I mean, I don't know what the. the I mean, we're not going to accent too much, but I'd imagine Suter surely when he comes back, we'll get into that team and better surely got to be out. I know they like to play in a back three before, but surely they've got to go. How could not been that strong either? Though he's been pretty bad to be fair. Especially since he came back for his injury, uh, he's not been the same. And we, you know, we top goal scorer. I know when we done uh, <laughs> even with that injury, uh, and when we 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 done a lot of our Livy previews last season before we played Livy he was always sort of someone we were talk- praising a lot and saying how good a player he was how much plaudits he was getting how him, Gallagher and uh, Lithgow were a real strong back three and he's just not done it at hearts which is it, it lovely just, to see it is it, it's, it's about the players that are around you I mean like we talked about like after the Celtic game how much like Porteous was having to cover for Hanlon because of Hanlon's mistakes. It's the exact same at Hearts. Like Halkett's got to work basically the whole centre back himself you now because Berra's gone. So I think obviously I'd, I I kind of see Halkett staying at Hearts much longer. Um, I think that there will be better teams in for him, and right. I mean we we wanted him <laughs> like before he went there. So uh, he's regretting the decision there. I don't think he's good enough to to be at Hearts. Like, I think Livy was probably at his level. I'm being honest. But Livy had a better team than Hearts, Dave. Yeah, well, aye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, a Hearts' best chance was probably uh, Machino. Kind of got a ball through, beat Naismith, cut on his right foot, and, you know, he's quite dangerous with that when he cuts on his right foot. It's a good shot, but Marciano proven why he's number one. 100%. Like, he should never have been out of team. And, and obviously... He needed a big game after the Rangers game as well, like to come back after like the first five minutes of the Rangers game and then play a, a full ninety minutes like that against Hearts at Tynecastle. I mean, that's the kind of player that you need in your team. 
So in the second half then, not a lot of chances to talk about unfortunately, we decided to change to the 4-5-1, Boyle went out to the right, Horgan to the left, Dodge through the middle, and we kind of tried to see out the second half, we sat on our two goal lead, how do you feel about doing that? In a derby, you know, when you're, you're, you obviously you want to try and get the win, you've got the 2-0 win, but would you rather see go for the third or fourth, or do you just worry about leaving yourselves open if you do that? What's your kind of thoughts on that? I'd prefer to absolutely hammer them and give them the one of the worst days of their lives, personally, rather than sitting 2 0. But it's game management, isn't it? But if they sneak one back, then it's squeaky bum time, so that's the risk you take. Mm-hmm. But in the end, it just it seemed pretty comfy. But I'd much rather go for the third, like we said in the group chat, watch them crumble and then. I take it for there and proper put on a pasting. Did we start the game management a bit too early? I mean, I, I remember getting a bit annoyed because Newell in the 83rd minute was trying to run it to the corner and then I think they won like a, a free kick up up that end and Dodge and Boyle were the only, I mean, not even Boyle, somebody else, were the only people in the box. I know because what game was it that, was it um, Kilmarnock that we were up to now mm-hmm. this season? Andros County. I bet we gave the ball away. Um, who was it that gave the ball away then we gave a daft free, free kick away and then obviously they then got the partner score for that yeah. and I'm like if we just went to the corner we would have so maybe we're learning for that because I think it was mm. Halberg that gave away the free kick yeah. that game who was that against? I think that was the county one aye so no no no, it was, no sorry you're right it was Kamara and then they put the ball into the box yeah. kind of came across <clears> and put it back across the goal and tapped it in yeah so maybe maybe I've learned for that because that was ridiculous it could have been so much that it dealt with so much better so I didn't have a problem with with game management but when when you've got a chance to get a result in the history books like a big result like mm. 7-0 for all the years ago a 6-2 I would have quite liked to have took it that's me just been picky I'm quite happy with 2-0 yeah. with the way the game went after the first half though, it could have easily been 5-6-0 oh, like, it, it was we could just have pasted them, like. the, only, the only thing that I can think of that would cause that was the fact that we have Levy on Sunday and I mean that's only the only logical explanation for like shutting up shop after half time getting a couple of changes in and stuff it just it's if that was if we had a game Saturday then Saturday Mm -hmm. and that happened I think fans would have been livid like I mean it's with the way that this season's went so far resting on a 2-0 lead like it just doesn't work for us and I mean, hearts are absolutely shocking. If that was any other team, I think in the league, we would have conceded. Yeah, I think you can do it against Hearts because they're shite. But if that was like Celtic and we're doing up a half time, sometime you kind of come out. I wouldn't even just... go as far as Celtic. I think if that was Aberdeen, like yeah. when we went three one up, like, they're going to take, up against take Aberdeen, their chances. They would have yeah. taken the chances. But I, th- I don't know if we were so much setting up shop to kind of see. Out the, the, I think we're trying to change the counter attacking thing. But the problem was, if you're going to play counter attacking football. You can't play Dodge, Horgan, and, and Boyle's only one that would really work in a counter attacking mm. three, I think. you know, yep. uh, Don't get me wrong, Dodge had a great game, a lot of hard work, but the problem is, like, anytime we stopped an attack, we'd clear it, and it got a Hearts player, and they come yep. again. It's just what this happened, I remember Wait. the Hamilton was really bad, away was really bad for this. But we, you know, and, and the credit, credit team maybe took a bit longer than I would have liked, but, you know, as good as Alan is, he wasn't an outball. We put on Malin, who obviously had instructions to do this. And as soon as the first time the ball came out, Malin was there to collect it, held it up, and kind of just gave Horgan and Dodge, you know, 10 seconds to get further up the park, and then we had a chance from that. So that's obviously something that... Ident- it's good to see that the, the sideline identifying that and making a change given the player instruction that comes off, but to me that could have came a wee bit sooner because it was happening for a long time in the second half. Yeah, we just let them have the ball second half, but we let a team that's not very good with the ball have the ball. Mm. So... At the end of the day, it worked, and you take take it every day of the week, wouldn't you? Yeah, doing it turn a lot tiny. Brilliant, aye. Um, so I mean, one of the kind of when we've seen the team come out, we kind of spoke about team like selection before, but a couple of question marks over you know McGregor getting back in as much as we love McGregor, thirty four year old back from injury, and you've got Jackson who's been fit for weeks, not getting in, new sign in, bit frustrating. But do you think that was maybe? the right head to go for you know in terms of knows the game knows Tyne Castle and just knows how to play with Hanlon can come in fit in straight away yeah and well this, this is what we spoke and obviously about. it worked because he was brilliant well, this is what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago when I said I probably thought McGregor was ahead of Jackson and you said he's didn't he so would you say now he is 
at the moment because he, he'll keep his place. Yes, but I think I, I would be interested. You know, if Porteous suspension had come up before, say, Kamarnik away and you know Levy, if Jackson had moved, who had went in for that. See, I, I think the thing is like it's it's more, it's not anything that Jackson's really doing wrong. I mean, you can you can see obviously when it came to the Rangers game, like mm-hmm. when Porteous got sent off, they brought on McGregor rather than Jackson, and that was McGregor's first game on the bench since <laughs> since he came back. So I think that, that there is a pecking order. There's a reason that they've signed McGregor on another four-year deal. Mm. He's obviously confident that he can stay in the team. So I think they are got to give him the run out. But, I mean, Jackson, did he not sign a three-year deal as well or something? Yeah, so, hopefully. So there is still time. And I, th- end, I think that he might be like more of a direct replacement for Hamlin. Because, I mean, Hamlin's what, coming up for 30 now already. 30, 30, 30. So he's not too so, bad. So I think that, but I mean, Hanlon's game has worsened recently. Like struggle, we've still got that before. Struggle since his muscle injury. Yeah. And plus, you've got three five two coming up soon <laughs> as well. So, <laughs> but um, but I mean, I mean, you know, we're kind of talking here about Jackson versus McGregor. At the end of the day, McGregor went in, and I think that's one of the best defensive displays we've had. He all knows season. how to play against Hearts. You know, so that's the thing. But even, I mean, obviously, Hearts. We're talking about Hearts straight, and we're going to mention how Hearts are straight as many times as we can. <laughs> but McGregor and Hanlon, um you know, know each other so well, and, and the defense was brilliant. At, yeah, at the they're both Hibs fans as well. I think that obviously does play a part in the fact that I mean, it was the same reason that we were playing Bartley against Hearts last season. When like whenever Bartley was playing, it was either against Old Firm or it was against Hearts. It wasn't really getting game time against Motherwell, Aberdeen teams like that. So. I think McGregor's got a job, and it's to break up play against teams that are stronger mm-hmm. attacking. So, so two 0 win uh, at Tynecastle. Okay, where does that rank? You know, we're obviously talking about last week. We're talking about uh, favourite games the last ten years. Where does that re- um, rank in the derbies in the last ten years? And obviously, we've kind of got the ones we talked about the Scottish Cup, but where in terms of other ones? It's in, it's enjoyable in the fact that it keeps them rooted bottom of the league. Mm. Um, but, but to see be fair to us it, it, we're fifth like it was, I think it's quite a big one for this Hibs team in the terms of like mentality mm. after like, quite a bad week last week um, against uh, Rangers so it's probably quite a big one but I still think last season's like the, the Horgan one there's nothing better than going behind and then coming back yeah mm. ah, and, uh, the screamer as well a goal and yeah. just, just late in the second half there's a bit more drama about it but Plus the, team, time, the Hearts team last season was a lot better than this season as well, in my opinion. So I, I think that that obviously plays a big part. Like this Hearts team, like anybody can beat them. So I mean, to me, it's just a, another result, really. I, I listen to a lot of Scott, uh, Scottish football podcasts and stuff, and about the radio and that. And I, I remember hearing so many people when when Hearts and Hibs were both out of a manager. And I remember like we're listening to Sports Sound like on the way back from St John's and whatever. And there was so many times that we're saying, if you were a manager and you had the choice between Hibs and Hearts, who would you go to? And everyone was saying, oh, you know, ah, Hibs have got a good setup and stuff, but they need a bit of work done. And the, the signs haven't worked out, and I'd go to Hearts because they've got the squad. And that's all it was. You know, everybody was saying that. You know, Hearts have got the squad, Hearts have got the squad. They've got, it's just the manager's the problem. Levine goes, and now the players are the problem. Hmm. Yeah, it's amazing, that, isn't it? I know. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I mean, Sendel's got a 100% record, so. <laughs> uh, I'm quite glad. Um, yeah. He seems like a. Delusional man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dominated the second half. Dominated the game. Dominated by doing what? Right, I, exactly. I had a team try to see out a two 0 win. Uh, he's struggling already. And you, and and you don't do anything. It's right. really enjoyable to see. It does not look like he's having fun. I don't I, know. Like I, I've I, not got a crystal ball, but I kind of see it lasting. I, I, the, the amount of time it took to appoint him, I don't think he wanted to come. Yeah. And I think they've thrown money at him. And you blame him? Be there. No. I, th- I think that they've now got a massive problem because they'll not be able to get rid of him in a hurry. Like the amount of money that they'll be due if he goes. I think he'll go soon. Do you think? Oh, I, I don't think. I don't think Stendel. I don't think. I don't think Stendel will be Hearts manager at the start of next season. Wow. No, can I see it? I don't know. If I, I, I just manage in the championship. I just think they'd have <laughs> far too. True. Unless they had something in his contract that if they get relegated, then he'll he'll go for nothing or. Or like very minimal money. Like I think that their payout for him to leave will it's, be massive. It's just been a wonderful Christmas, though, hasn't it? Oh, it has. Like we've had Christmas, <laughs> we've had a derby win, and then 
social media and the forums what have about, just been phenomenal what afterwards. about that Hibs tweet that I'm assuming Kenny put out on the Hibs main Twitter brilliant oh Absolutely my brilliant. days I was, all my days that's me copying because <laughs> I've been copying that <laughs> Frank Pong like even my dad like mentioned Hart's pre- statement yeah. you know during the game and how ridiculous it was and stuff so for Hibs to put it that after it was absolutely brilliant yep. um, just like, like the, the one against Mother a few weeks ago which yep. you know the, the terrace picked up and stuff just Brilliant. Can't um, beat it. Aye. No, I, so social media just been, it's been brilliant to read that account, the uh, Jambo's Meltdown. What was it called again? JKB Meltdown. Aye. Yeah. That's, that's been great to read. Some of that's been brilliant. I um, go on kickback. I've already told you this, and my manager that works, a Hearts fan, uh, rips me for going on kickback, but I spend a considerable <laughs> time. I can go through a couple of coffees and s- just scroll and scroll and scroll. It's endless entertainment. I enjoy reveling in their tears. Mm. It's amazing. Nothing wrong with a bit of free entertainment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, finished up then, you know, how would you sort of, uh, I can't put you on the spot, but a three word review for the for the Boxing Day Derby. How would you kind of review it? Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Just really, really pleasing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, quickly, I mean, we didn't do a podcast on Monday because we're busy with Christmas, but we kind of have to touch on the game last Friday which was the Rangers game just quickly um, I mean I'm going to try and word these questions as positively as I can to get nice positive answers to keep the, the mood up upbeat but so the first question how good was it to see the team respond so positively against Hearts after <laughs> such a performance <laughs> disappointing result against, against Rangers oh, you played a binder there <laughs> I was like, how are you going to do that uh, nah, obviously it was good to have such a good start against Hearts after that last week but it was a completely di- it's always going to be a completely different game. Mm. Yeah, it could have done, it couldn't have done much worse to be honest. So obviously to pick it up, um, I just, I think my faith in Jack Ross has been <laughs> refound again because after after last Friday it was it was gone. <laughs> it was a re- really short lived. But I was concerned about the way we we're going to set up against Hearts a wee bit because yeah. Fair enough, we're all about gone gun ho against Rangers and oh, when I seen the lineup I was fine with it, but we were open, mm-hmm. like naive and when you lose a goal in the first couple of minutes and then you find yourself two 0 down and then you find to get back into the game you need to be even more open mm-hmm. against a team like obviously that have got a lot better, you're screwed. We spoke to Mickey Weir and we kind of asked him how Hibs came back from such a big defeat because that was sort of around about the time when you know we just lost at Ibrox. We asked him when when he his uh, Hibs team lost at Ibrox, how did they come back for that? And he said, you know, they beat Hearts on the Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. So great to have that opportunity to kind of bounce back immediately, and it's great credit to the players and the management for bouncing back so quickly and so positively. Yep, so quickly. Because <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> I was expecting. Let's face it, Maxwell didn't do that much wrong, right? He made a mistake, yeah. it dropped. So I was thinking to myself, is there a chance that like Bogdan could come in here? Because Marciano's mistake was a hell of a lot worse than anything mm. Maxwell's done. Yeah. Um, and I would say, obviously that whole thing last Friday all started for that. Like the whole night just fell apart. Everything we'd planned for midweek, all our pre- pints in the pub, the, the mood just died at that moment. Yeah. Didn't it? No, so I was balanced died. That yeah, moment. balanced died because you l- lumped <laughs> loads of nibs. But uh, nah, just uh, so I uh, so good to get that game at the road and have the derby so soon after. Yeah, and I'm glad we stuck with Rocky because it could have been quite bad if we'd been as harsh. But I, th- I, th- I think if I think if Marciano lost his place for the derby, I think that that would have caused mass like, uproar. Like, but from, why? From, why no, from from him. Like oh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I don't think from the fans because obviously I think that a lot of folk actually want to see Bogdan, um, but for Marciano, I think he needed that game to bounce back, and he's proved why he's why he's capable. Yeah, of I'm glad, I'm glad we stuck with him, and I hope he is our number one for a while. I hope yeah. he doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, and and, and finish up with the Rangers game. Obviously, like a lot more pe- the intelligent people than us have had their input on and some less intelligent people have had their in- input on the whole trouble off the pitch the CCTV's picked up the four people so you know that's sort of dealt with I think Jack Ross said it best when he said about you know if you need to if you feel the need to throw a glass bottle at anybody regardless of whether you're a football match or not then you've got to have a look at yourself so he kind of said it better than we ever could but 
do you think that's the last Friday night? Under we kind of got excited about a Friday night game under the lights against Rangers. Do you think that's going to be the last Friday night game against the old former Hearts for quite a while? Yeah, we'll probably end up getting shafted with twelve o'clock kickoffs and that, and pubs didn't open till eleven and. I wasn't in the stadium, I had left in a half. I know. That but was see, my, that see, was see my three, find... three word reviews gone now. Dave left early. I just wasn't enjoying it, mate. See, but see, if you're that angry and you find yourself in that situation, that's what you're just, you. you're just doing more damage to just, yourself. Just remove yourself for the situation. But like, anyway, I'm not enjoying this. Mm-hmm. I'm away him. If you feel that angry that you feel like you need to throw a glass bottle at another person, like, regardless of who it is, like, yep. just take yourself out of that situation and just go. Yeah. Like, Stop being an idiot. The the news the, the money that's spent on the CCTV, we kinda of said it was a lot of money spent at the time, but it's definitely proven worthwhile and it's you know, it's quite already found the four people, so that's yeah. good. So but well done to the club for that. They've they, you know, the club themselves have I think have handled this as good as they could. Um hopefully that's kinda of draws a line, line under it. But um yeah, so kinda of, you know, good to see how you have bounce from back from you know a disappointing performance last Friday. Yep. And I hope the next time we play Rangers we give them again. Just sort of on that then John Doig on Facebook kind of said, "What areas of the pitch do Hibs need to strengthen in January?" And I guess on that, you know, okay, what do we need in order to put up a better fight against the old firm? Defensive midfielder. Yep, somebody to sit in there and break up steady. Aye, like Slavka and Malin, because like, Slavka does a job. I don't think Malin does. I know you didn't see much the second half because you're away, but I thought Slivka was one of the only players to get past marks. I thought he came on done very done really well. It was really tidy on the ball. Yep. Uh, Any time that he kind of got, he was able to get himself a bit of space and had time to clear the ball. So I think he done really well. Um, and him and Halberg was maybe a partnership we should have started with, maybe been a bit better. But yeah, I think we definitely need a defensive midfielder. Um, it's not the only thing. When I think, and I think you know. I think there's a big thing about you know oh sign players and it'll be finished. I think you can there's a lot to be said about coaching as well, coaching the current players you've got, and I think that definitely an approach as well that we could definitely take. And hopefully, next time the old firm come round, give them a better game. Yep. Uh, and and Stuart had asked, do you, does the host think Poachers deserved a red card against Rangers? Yep. I personally do. I think. Would you, Dave? What did you think? Yeah, I thought it was a red. Now that's gonna be, that's gonna be because I think it's been very mixed opinions from all sets of fans but all three of us agree that it was a red card yeah you're going to help we're going to help probably a lot of abuse for that oh, like, which is fine I'm really which no bad I don't so mind if people have got it. their own opinion on it but to me like, like the, 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 it doesn't matter if you win the ball if you're still the intent was there and, and, and what, intent. An, what annoyed me was right basically Barisic got it for his reaction at the third goal right because mm-hmm. I've seen it because I was like uh, I'm away I'm not right. watching this because him and Golton were celebrating in front there was stuff getting chucked at Barisic he was moving up the road, he sarcastically chucked a cup back it was good in the Hibs fans right but you wouldn't be big enough and ugly enough to take it, you dish it out you take it right, so in my opinion Barisic has been in front of that stand mm-hmm. and Porteous has seen him, ran to get the ball and went, wait if I slow down a wee bit here it's not even in my opinion, that is what he done, yeah. I can nail him right, and he's, he's, he's went to obviously do it, and if you go into a tackle with intent to hurt another player Red kid. Yeah, it's because it's, it's the same with the Cosgrove one. A lot of people are saying about how that he won the ball again. He won the ball, but his other foot was high. C- Cosgrove was washed because he was off the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not uh, aye. So uh, okay, he gets the ball first, but it's still dangerous, and for that, it's a red card. Yeah, it's excessive. Just like force. Scott Brown's was like, at Easter Road. Yeah, so that's, that's the where hypocrisy comes. Hypocrisy comes in because you've got like folk like Mikey Stewart, who I normally like. Mm. That time on sports scene saying it's a yellow. Then you've got them all moaning that that's a straight red. But there's probably Browns is probably worse. But I just think Porteous just needs to needs to grow up a wee bit. To be fair, I think doing that's even harsh. But yeah, great. Like I say, getting back to the original point, great to see Hibs bouncing back with a great performance after a poor one. So more of that, and hopefully there's no more poor results, performances like that to bounce back from. Last week we done our matches, our games of the decade, our favourite games, and this week we thought we'd do our team of the decade, sort of picking a fantasy eleven. I think you guys have maybe done some subs as well. I've not, but we'll, we'll kind of do our, we'll, we'll kind of go through our own elevens. You know, what formations we've gone for, what players we've gone for, and then we'll try and agree on a collective Hibs Talk 2010s uh, team. Our own 11s and Gav's two backup teams, just in case a full <laughs> team gets wiped uh, off. You're saying, you're saying you've not got subs and you've got <laughs> two A4 pages of <laughs> honourable mentions. 
22. I guess you, I've got a big bench then. If you want to look at that. 22 <laughs> honourable mentions. A big bench. You've got a stand. <laughs> So we'll go through the team position by position. It's going to be a bit awkward because I believe you guys got a different formation from me. But let's start with the goalie because you only get one goalie. So who you, who have you guys went for for the best goalkeeper of the last 10 years? Rocky. Marciano. Rocky Marciano. Yeah, I agreed all around there. He's been brilliant, hasn't he? Yeah. And I hope we keep him for a bit yeah. longer. Yeah. I think he's got 18 months left in his deal, but I want no, three, four years added to that. I love him. Yeah. Just, I, just, I love having a goalkeeper that I've got a lot of faith in and just that's my keeper and I just want that done you know keepers can play until they're 40 and I'd have them play till 40 if I got my way we've never really had a keeper that's been like as solid as he is no. in the last decade when you look through the list it's slim pickings yeah. so good yeah so I mean this is kind of where my honourable mentions kind of comes in is there any other keepers that he's considered Logan Conrad Logan because he's a legend yeah aye um, I love that story that Matthew told a few weeks ago about him just you just hear it about how you know his attitude sounded phenomenal yeah. he's just a great guy and a legend for the Scottish Cup and, and it's just that the, the semi-final you'd written him off Stephen before a ball had been kicked you were like, you were like why are we even here if we've got a guy like that in goals and he was phenomenal uh-huh. that game uh, and obviously brought well, like well, goal, eh? that was <laughs> <laughs> uh, another one I wanted to mention uh, this might not be popular because uh, he, we did get relegated with him in goals but I thought Ben Williams was a really really good goalkeeper but just didn't have a good team in front of him oh he done really well didn't he <laughs> just, just my opinion your goalkeeper on your team you get relegated Gav team of the decade honourable <laughs> <laughs> no, mention I, I think he was a very good goalkeeper and could, would have done better with a better team in front of him right okay um, anyway so right back I think we're all going to agree on this one I've got David Gray Ryan McGovern I'm on you up. I know he was, I know he was left back because I was panicked. Yeah, aye, David Gray. David Gray, yeah. I mean, just a legend yeah. already. And just, yeah, brilliant. Um, to be fair, I've got him as a right wing back. But aye. So far. Aye. Fair enough. We uh, both went 3 5 2. Yeah, Stephen. So we're going to go to the centre backs. I've got two, you've got three. Who's uh, the first of the centre backs you've mentioned? Hanlon. I've got McGregor. Have you got Hanlon as well, though? No. No. Oh. I've got Hanlon and McGregor. Right. I've got Hanlon as well. Yeah. Um, How can so you not have Paul Hanlon? I've right. got him on my bench. <laughs> so you've got three centre backs and Paul Hanlon's not in the, the team. <laughs> Deary me. Right. So so why you went for Paul Hanlon, Dave? Because he's played the last 10 years and he's been phenomenal for the most of it. Yeah. We've having a bad time in the last like, six months, but he's been class. I've got I've got him in my team. Right, he's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and then my, my virgin's Effie. Yeah, I've got Effie as well. I've got Effie and Hanlon as my two. Right. I was still again tempted to put McGregor in, but yeah. yeah so I've got Effie. And who's the third centre back you went for? Bamba. Bamba's a good shout, to be fair. Yeah, he's on my bench. Yeah. yeah I had Adam down as an honourable mention, so just, you know. <coughs> aye. Um, to be fair, there was a, he did play a bit the season before and saying that. I, I was going to say he played a bit the 2009 season, but I've got somebody that did in my team, so. We'll he stayed with us till 2011, so. Yeah. It's good enough for me. Fair enough, Bamba, it's a good one. But um and then left back, again, all in agreement. Stevenson, McGovern, <laughs> Kajabi. No. <laughs> no. no. Stevenson. Yeah, I mean Louis, just what I say, I mean that photo of him yesterday was phenomenal. Do you see that one by was it Alan Rennie? Yeah. Mr. Hibbs, and he's just, you know, pumping towards the fans. Just brilliant. Love the guy a bit. So yeah, definitely Louis left back. Um and obviously you guys have said your your three centre backs. You see your third one, Dave? Yeah, Harlan McGregor Effie. Right, aye. So uh, in the midfield, obviously I've went for, I've went for a diamond, and yep. I've got Marvin Bartley sitting in front of the defence. Fair play, he's on my bench. He's on your bench. Has he made your team at all? Yeah, just take a time, Stephen. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. he's in your starting eleven. No, not on my eleven on my bench. Right. So why have you left Bartley out? Why am I falling out with you? Because I wanted to play a. Uh, 3-5-2 and I wanted wing backs and I wanted McGinn, Allen and McGeoch in my middle that's my, that's my free as well <laughs> so Mate. sorry Marv but I would head you in there if if you turned off uh, <laughs> you're coming on now so uh, he's a mention <laughs> coming on when we're winning <laughs> he's a mention the rest of your midfield there um, you know McGinn and Allen I, I, I mean that's a given yeah know, they've been phenomenal uh, Allen in three spells uh, um, in the last ten years yeah McGinn in the one phenomenal spell that we'll always look back on and other clubs will only slag us about it. I think there's a Livy Twitter uh, page that was giving us grief about 
you know, John McGinn's season and all the Hibs fans wishing him his best and stuff. I'd give him a tissue. I'd give him a tissue too, Stephen. But I think that's just because they're jealous because they've never had such a quality player at their club. Well, this is true. Aye. Yeah, on a bit of speedy recovery to him. Uh, got over that ankle injury. No, he's out um, until after March. Now he's out for the Euro it's, Club. It's, it's McGinn, though. He's magic. He'll be back before then. He's one of those that's just going to surprise all the physios. Guaranteed. He'll, be, he'll play a game in February. I'll put money on it. He's super. <laughs> um, so yeah I understand why I went for McGinn and Allen um, but the third midfielder I went for cause, uh, well the fourth I guess was Liam Miller I've got him on my bench Aye. I I think you know he was one of the again a really talented player great to see him at Easter Road I think I, I think you know Kevin McBride maybe not the best player in the world but he how he was able to sit and do the tidy work and Miller was just from that season we finished fourth he was player of the season by far yeah um, and I think that was to be fair the 0-9-10 season I think we finished fourth but obviously that se- second half of the season and the season after that played 38 games and scored five goals so you know still good the season after that I think he was a, a really good player um, obviously unfortunately what happened to him a few years ago but you know great player great guy and yeah um, so I had him in my so my mid- midfield was Bartley Miller and McGinn and then Allen in the number 10 position it's funny that good Gav's not actually put McGeeck in it though I thought Gav would I know uh, I was tempted to put McGeeck but I thought, well, if McGeeck's playing, he's either going to be in that one, and I, th- and I picked Miller ahead of him, and I thought, am I going to have him the sitting midfielder? And I just love Bartley too much, and and I think one of the reasons why was because when I seen Bartley against uh, playing for Livingston against us, I realised how much we could do with him right now, and just I love him. I just he's been, he's just the way he talks about the club when he's away from it as well. Just it's brilliant, and um, so yeah, Bartley's the matter. One of the things I'll fight is if, he's, if he doesn't make the final. One team. of the things that Bartley's got over, like say, like McGeoch and that, is he's got a good song. Aye, yeah. <laughs> <No>. I mean, <laughs> so McGeoch. Did McGeoch ever get a yeah. song or an attempt at a song? No, I don't think so. We'll get him one when he comes back in January. Aye, aye, we'll sort that out. Aye. Um, so then up to the strikers, then who have you went for? Stokes and Griffiths. <gasps> oh, I went for Riordan and Griffiths. And the pure the the sole reason for that was because I I had this conversation with Dave before and it wasn't specifically how they performed in the last ten years it's how they've performed as a Hibs player. But it was his team of a decade though. Yeah, he's, been, he's, he's I played. Said with I said to him, it's up to him. As long as they've played in that decade, he's played, he's played with us in the last decade. Mm, I guess. But, I mean, Varden disappointing. I think towards the end of his second spell, which was yeah, who comes into I'd that. Agree with that. But so. with that logic, you would have had rather than in the corner then, no? No. I would, I, would still, I would just still say that Griffiths was better than O'Connor. I think O'Connor had a better second spell at Hibs than Rowden did, technically. Probably. I'd say that he did start well when he came back in the ward. That season we're in 0 1, he was really good. Um, yep. Silly number, but yeah, but yeah, I guess getting back to the last 10 years, I've went for Griffiths because yep. he just scored buckets. I think, you know, we will all see Griffiths. Yep. And Jason Cummins. You were Cummins? Aye. Aye, he went to, he went to uh, Rangers. Yeah, that's what was kept him at my team. Mm. I get that. I, I, so I mean, the the one you went for was was Stokes. Yep. Yes, phenomenal in the cup final, but it was a pretty disappointing spell. Apart from the the Scottish Cup where he scored against Inverness and against um, against Rangers. Yeah, um, but he had the best game, individual game, in a hips top that I've seen in the last ten years. Ten years. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm, I can't. Think, I can't think of a better. That he absolutely terrorised that Rangers team that day. He was a man possessed. Mm. He gets to play for me for that. So I, I think if we're if we're kind of we're obviously have to, have to try and agree on a midfield in a minute. But I think if we're going to try and agree on a team, I think we could maybe give Dave this one and go for Griffiths and Stokes. Would you concede, or would you? Are you going to fight him to get Ryder in? No, I wouldn't fight him to get Ryder in. <laughs> Okay, I okay. know I I I seen Wyden on the list and mm. there's other players on the list that have been good in oh, the last ten years. Like Ian Murray who was yeah. in the other, so you could look to him. You've Kevin Thompson, you could look to him. Sproul, I know. There was loads that I looked at and was like, mm. yeah. but don't they worry, they'll they'll never done it in this ten anyway. years. <laughs> uh, never done it in this ten years. Yeah. So I just left it. That's fair enough. Aye. I, I could, I, I, I could I be seated honest with you. Seeing you brought this up, I was like, just the cup final team. Yeah, that's what well, everybody's will be like. Because at the end of the day. Legends and that in it, and yeah, but I think that's just counting, it's just counting what the likes of you know. Paul oh my did god, that day. See, no, see when you look at the players we had for 2010 to 2014, mm. dearie me, oh my, <laughs> I'm doing it again. It was absolutely shocking, yeah. Off, yeah. oh, no, not, not many of the contenders in that absolute four years. gross, no, no, 
No, some pretty, <laughs> pretty wage, uh, Kajabi, wasted wages. Kajabi, Tico. Like. And this is what we're Daniel talking Daniel Carmichael. We could go through, there's no point. We're not doing a dud team. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're, if we're agreeing on a team then, uh, I think, you know, we uh, used to have went for the 3 5 two, so we'll go for that. We've agreed on the goalkeeper and the full-backs. We've agreed on Effie. No, you went for McGregor and Hanlon, didn't you? And Effie. So do we, we, should we go for those three, McGregor, Hanlon and Effie as the three? I don't know, like, I like Bamba, eh? Uh, ah, but uh, for me, Effie done more than Bamba on a hip stop. Who's this? Who's this in the boot? Effie coming out? Ah, <laughs> uh, you went. You, you left Hanlon out, aye. But nah, I'll fight you in that. I, I, I'm gonna fight a few. Okay, a few in a few fights. I think. But now nah, Hanlon definitely is gonna be in. Yeah. So so we'll, we'll agree. So, we'll agree on that. So Effie, Bamba, and Hanlon then. <laughs> so McGregor, Effie, and Hanlon, the back three. Yep. Uh, Gray, Stevenson. Mm-hmm. So the midfield three, right? So if we're narrowing it down to three. McGinn and Allen, we all went for them. Yep. So then it comes down to Bartley versus McGeeock. McGeeock. Now, you, the two of you have gone for McGeeock, but I've went for Bartley. And I'm, I want Bartley. Right, I, okay. I want you but to then you're going to split up the best trio. Doesn't matter. That we've had. And I want Bartley. We can stick Bartley up front then, because he's not going in the midfield. A bit of goal scorer on it, to be fair. He can, he exactly. can play up front. I'll put Bartley up front with Griffiths. <laughs> 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 nah, eh... Uh, Oh, right. we we'll, give him, we'll give him one. No, nah, I'm not getting a McGeeock over. Um, but you, would you play? I wouldn't play Bartley over McGeeock. But I mean, McGeeock, like, as good as player McGeeock was, he had one season injury free and he won player of the year, quite rightfully so. Bartley, I think, done it over four years. Yeah, I'll give him that. But he never really played it in his last season. He's played, host. He played enough. Right, thing I've, right, thing. I'm the boss. Well, it doesn't really matter what our opinions are. They're any five foot of a day. He's the rest of the team. <laughs> team of the decade. <laughs> got to give him one shout. Because I've got your three five too. It's also a decent shout. So right, give him it. Fair enough. And then we're going for Stokes and Griffiths up top. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. that's, that's the, the combined hip stock team. I mean, we've got we've got our own individual teams, and we'll see who people agree with the most on the three teams. Well, it's we'll basically we'll... my team. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll I think up. we won sub <laughs> uh, and we'll kind of put through I mean but yeah players that have kind of done well over the last 10 years I mean ones that maybe weren't there for that long uh, maybe a bit soon for H- H- Halberg and Dodge but you know Omiyonga and McNulty had good 6 months but only 6 months I, I never put him in Onga, I thought it was brilliant I, um, I, 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 what I would give to get Omiyonga back at the club what um, would you talk us through it who else have we got talk us through what you would give what would I give up <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'll think about that for next week. You can't even uh, name it. You would you give, give up? Would bit. you give up Halberg for Omionka? Oh, I don't know. Halberg's a good-looking man. Oh, would you want to base it on looks? I don't know. I, want, I, want <laughs> <laughs> I want them both in the midfield. Um, anyway, uh, McLaren and Camberry done really well in that six months. Camberry's been good again this season. So Camberry was another shout, but McLaren, um, especially in his first spell. Uh, I thought Holt done really well in the year he was there and got the best out of Cummins. Who else? We've got Porteous, obviously. Uh, and obviously Her- Liam Henderson. Yeah, Colin yeah. Henderson, I've, got, I've got Fontaine, Henderson, Boyle, Cummins, Bartley, Bamba and Logan on my bench. I've got yeah. Logan, Bartley, Henderson, Malonga, Boyle. Malonga, that's another one. Yeah, yeah. Big Dom. He would have been in my cult team. Cult team, yeah. Cult oh, team. yeah. We'll... we'll Probably do that towards the end of the season, a cult team, and I think he's a real contender for a cult team. Yeah. Um, 5A, another one, obviously. Scottish Cup winner. Um, and who else? Uh, Claros? No, I didn't like him if I wanted to this. I ah, you've went over this. Yeah. I, I loved him when he was with us. I think he gave us that bit in midfield that we're looking for now. Yeah. But, but Dave hates him, so. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never forget the cup final, that's why. And Simon Murray for Peter. What, the same, cu- the same cup final that Griffiths played in? The same <laughs> I know, but with Claros was in the centre of that midfield, towing a caravan, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, aye, and I've got Fontaine on that list as well, who you mentioned. Um, and Ken, who else I noticed when I was going through the list? Who? Matt Dockery. Oh, I would love he just, He's just never done enough I would us, love so. a conversation with him. Any house I'd be like, who do you think you are? Like, any, uh, <laughs> that's a conversation that I think everybody needs to have them. Uh, Anybody, any Hibs fan that's got him and their fantasy football team need to have a look at themselves. I can't stand them. 
Yeah, I just took that cup again. But anyway, anyway. That's just because you can have got me my fantasy football team this season. You're a disgrace. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Oh, oh this doesn't surprise me. You'll not see uh, Stephen on the podcast next week. Um, <laughs> is that all it took? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were trying try for, for the last episodes, two and two all it years. took for you to find out that I would have taken that ages ago. <laughs> Uh, so uh, what about a manager um, I don't know if you've done this but you know I, I think there's sort of I thought about three it. main contenders because I, I, I went as far as thinking of a strip alright okay yeah so but bit pathetic that's fine what was your favourite strip go with Pop, that away one aye it's nice the one with the luminous uh, the one the, the, the 2015-16 season yeah the, cup, that's oh, one, the, that, that's the one, one that we won the cup final one that's kind of iconic now even though it's Nike which is a bit annoying yeah. Uh, no, the way top for that was my season. Yeah. I like the first uh, Macron one, uh, the one with the the collar and just the plain green with the white sleeves. Um, but the Scottish Cup winning top, was, yeah, oh, I loved that simplicity of it. Just the the lovely white collar. I like the darker green. Yep. The this just simple with the Nike tick, the bet, the the the, the, the sponsor and the, the badge, and then the white sleeves, just perfect. I've got two of them. I love it. I think I've got like four. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Um, and so, manager, then back to the original question: Who you who who's going for? Stubbs. Right. If he's going Stubbs, I'm going to go Neil Lennon. Then it's a toss up between Stubbs and Lennon, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Terry Butcher. It's between the three of them. <laughs> I think if Neil Lennon had the team that I don't know, it's actually unfair to say. I don't know. It's it is between the two of them. I think if Lennon had left after the 5-5 game it'd be a much closer conversation yeah it kind of spoiled it a wee bit didn't it mm, I think so yeah. um, but or, or if he'd left you know and done really well and then uh, say for, to even a top 6 finish and then left at the end of the season to go to Celtic then that but, but if, if, I, if we're talking about presumptions what if Stubbs had stayed yeah, after the cup final game then we would we, we, have won the league by now yeah we'd have the, the East would be the Alan Stubbs stand <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> you'd have a statue a lot of things I would, I would have it. a statue um, <laughs> I'd have a statue Alan Stubbs as well before yeah um, I would be in a bit it's facetious the right word there but yeah um, about, but obviously um, Stubbs done brilliant won the Scottish he, Cup he, he got a dictionary for his Christmas or a thesaurus <laughs> <laughs> no he's got that toilet paper that has a new word on it ah <laughs> secret Santa present <laughs> um, yeah obviously a lot of people have got their opinions on Stubbs good and bad you know I think some people because feel Why that do you have a bad opinion on Stubbs? I can understand people's opinion where if we hadn't won that Scottish Cup you know we lost, we lost I know I know but we lost the League Cup final we failed promotion twice um, you know got beat by Falkirk in the playoffs and stuff so I can understand why people would say it, things would be very different if we'd lost that Scottish Cup final but we didn't we won it yeah folks would say it was nearly a disaster it was also nearly unbelievable mm-hmm and then we got somewhere in the middle and we won the Scottish Cup that's a bit more that's a bit more than in the middle yeah we bet exactly (laughs) um, so running through the the team that's going to win the poll uh, Marciano Gray FA Hanlon Louis Bartley Miller McGinn Hanlon Griffiths Cummins but the agreed on team uh, we said Marciano and goals so 5-2 so it was Gray Hanlon FA and McGregor and Louis Uh, the midfield three of Bartley McGinn and Allen and then Stokes and Griffiths up top so we'll put out those four teams get your guys opinions on them and ask for your guys team of the decade as well uh, I think there's actually a forum on this in the on who's our .net or one of them I'll find which one it is and we'll, we'll put this in and just gotta keep that conversation going uh, in there so so let us know your team of the decade and your thoughts on ours we finish up today's podcast with the Livy game Livy on Sunday they have got they've had a bit of a mixed few results the last five games but they're scoring goals 12 goals in the last five games uh, four of them coming from Dykes in the last two games hat-trick against Ross County and then one against Aberdeen so we, we, you know we spoke about the defensive display from Hibs being good McGregor and Hanlon playing well together but we really have to watch um, the danger of Levy from a def- an, an attacking point of view as well as a defensive point of view yeah definitely mm-hmm. stick with the same the set and half pairing I would Mm-hmm. McGregor and Hamlin deserve it at the end of the day after that yeah and we spoke about Bartley uh, in our sort of team of the decade before you know he's got his first goal let's just let's talk about his first goal in Scotland who was that against again who's that <laughs> so was it I was like who was that oh Hearts <laughs> actually it was what a goal eh I know it's like a, a, a scissor kick that's what I'm looking for yeah. just brilliant where was that when he was at us I don't know but as long as he doesn't score 
against us. Mm. I hope he has a bad game. Because <laughs> if he has a bad game, we've got a better chance of winning. Mm. If he has a good game, it'll be, it'll be difficult. But mm. uh, uh, He had a very good game Easter Road and kept Scott Allen very quiet. So how does Scott Allen impose himself more in the game and break free from Bartley? Uh, I don't know. Stephen? Um, it's, it's a tough one really because um, I think it's a big problem in the fact that Bartley knows the Hibs team well and I think it's got to be more the players around Bartley that's got to give Alan the freedom because I think that everybody's got to be marking Alan after that game um, I think it's got to take a wee bit of luck more than anything to be honest and Halberg's got to need to like put in a good performance to free Alan up a bit more space yeah. either that or you just just run at him and then hope he like brings you doing that and he gets an early booking and then he, then he then struggles the yeah. on in yeah, but like I could say up Livy, um, you know, Bartley has Sibbled sitting beside him, Sibbled who, you know, came to it Falkirk more of an attacking midfielder but mm-hmm. has dropped back and is able to sort of do that deep playing I spoke to Livy mate by the way, get on the, the inside scoop, so I've got a couple of notes here. But yeah, he's sort of playing that new that sort of deep line playmaker role alongside Bartley. They've got a good combination. Um another thing we apparently need to worry about is Suda, who's on really good form on the left wing at the moment. He's doing really well and on the right hand side they've got Lawson at right back and Lawless on the right wing. The two of them are um, you know, linking up really well and are really dangerous. So I love, Leo I love how in depth Gav goes when we play Livy <laughs> my best mate's a Livy fan I can ask him loads of stuff That's fine. I just need more f- football uh, f- from friends from further afar his best friend ah uh, no that kind of that kind of <laughs> uh, knife went quite deep there Gav <laughs> uh, but yeah I mean so that, from that do you think Louis could be in for a difficult game if Lawson and Lawson, Lawless link up well and pose a dangerous danger down the right side yes <laughs> you done that thing again? Yeah, I did. I you, can you, you put a compelling argument against it there, and then asked me. Yeah, I, I, I believe your research is correct. No, I didn't yeah. see as much as Lovey or I don't have any. Or his best mate. I, I need to do that sales technique of asking open questions rather than closed questions. Um, yeah. But nah, it could be in for a difficult one. Aye, it depends. We need to watch the bounce in that day. Um, obviously, we're going about the pitch, but it's a hundred percent a factor. Yeah, but and then we're it. used to it. Yeah, Bartley said that he sell on a like BBC Scotland interview. So, mm. uh, Porch is still out through suspension. I believe I think it was a two match suspension. Yep. So McGregor to start. Dave, you already said that. Would you keep McGregor in? Yeah, no yeah, reason yeah. to drop him. I clean sheet. Him. Uh, any other changes in mind with Livy in mind with the way they set up? They should set up with a four two three one. Would you go with the diamond again? We finish the game with the f- uh, f- playing a four two three one ourselves. You know, Malin got dropped. How long is Camberry expected to be out for? I don't know. That's the thing. If if Camberry comes back, do you put him on the bench and keep boiling Dodge up top, or do you bring Camberry back in, who's done re- you know really well for Dodge? What what do you kind of do? Three, Obviously, good problems to have. Three five two. <laughs> three so, five two. Three five two. Yep. So where where are you playing Boyle? On the right wing back. So he scored two goals at Tincastle, and you're chucking him a right back. Right wing back. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> Uh, and you're dropping Naismith? Yeah. Wow, okay. I wouldn't start any different to the team that went 2 0 up after half an hour at Tencastle. But yeah. another away game, probably go that. They're getting used to the diamond, a bit of consistency, you know. Um, and I think the midfield was more balanced. Um, I don't know I don't know how much Horgan offered left centre mid, but at the end of the day, it worked. That's um, And then we've seen Boyle do that role for coming from deep. Horgan with, you know, a bit more freedom because it obviously changed at half time could maybe do that a bit more with, so that could work so yeah I, I think I'd agree with you start with the same team so what's your score predictions for the game then? Uh, I think it'll be one each I think it's probably one of the hardest away games out with the old firm yeah Hearts and Aberdeen like for example I think they, Livy comes next behind them 2-0 mm. 2-0 yep aye um, I think with Louis scoring record, Dykes is you know a real goal machine. Um, I think we will be doing very well to keep him quiet. So because of that, I'm gonna go two one Hibs. Um, yeah, still like, you know Aberdeen got the job done against him. So I think there's you know we're a good enough team to get the result. Obviously that was it. Pataudry rather than it, 
um, the Tony Macaroni Arena, it's a ridiculous name, but yeah, I think, you know, um, Dykes will probably score, if not then Bartley, <laughs> the goal machine that he is, um, and yeah, uh, but I think we'll, we'll snatch it 2-1. Um, my, my only, my, like I said, I don't bet much, but my second bet of the season, I put a bet on a Hibs Aberdeen double at the weekend. That bet. Oh, I saw you did that. So you did say that. Yeah, I'm just. I I hope it. I hope we can win. Take it in the new year. Yeah, mm. we went a break. Yeah, we went a break. Coming sixteen up, so. point gap. Between mm-hmm. Hearts and Hibs. Mm. It'll be interesting to see what kind of Hibs team come back from the winter break because there's a real opportunity. You know, it was like three weeks before the Dundee United game to get, you know, some new new signings in. Jack Ross, some time to work with the team. I don't know if they're going away anywhere or not, but um, some time to kind of work with the team to impose some ideas. So it'll be interesting to kind of see what kind of comes from that. Yep. And then loads to look forward to after the winter break because Scottish Cup. Yep. Scottish Cup's back. Um, trip to Dundee. Yep, trip to Dundee and then, you know, all back on with the league. And I'm really excited about the second half of the season under Ross, especially if we get one or two new faces in. Even if we don't, I'm really excited about the rest of the season. Yeah, I'd quite like a wee, a wee European chase. Something, something to chase because it did not look like there was going to be any anti chase that has been very well salvaged, I would say. Yeah, um, that was that was one of the other questions somebody had asked. It was from James who'd asked, can we reach fourth or even third? Uh, and what do the Jambos need to survive? Don't don't worry about what they need to go into. I mean, like I said earlier, I think they're linked with eight players on loan or something. But something like that. do you think there's a do you think there's a chance Hearts could go down? Definite possibility for me. I I'm gonna say I because they're the they're the, they're the worst record in the last thirteen mm-hmm. months in the league. So, but I yeah. could see them finishing. I think they'll be in a relegation fight the majority of the season, and I could see them being in the relegation playoff. Uh, even that, some laugh. Yeah. Just watch the name here, that squeaky bum time. But imagine, say, say for example, let's play out a scenario here, mm-hmm. right? Just, I know even a long winded one. Just, we win at the weekend, they get beat. There's a 16 point gap, get into midway through January, the time the league resumes. See if we tell you, somebody said to you, you'd be 16 points ahead of hearts at Christmas. I think we would be top of the league or something. Yeah, <laughs> or right. sitting second, or like you would, eh? But mm. no, he's a fifth. It's, it's a bit odd, eh? Uh, it's insane, though. Like, like I've seen the, the the graphic come up. I mean, we we spoke about this before, but eighteen points that came up. Just it's just my, that we've dropped from winning positions. Yeah. If I mean, obviously it's a big if. But if you'd even kept like twelve of those points, we'd be clear in third. Yeah. It's nuts. Uh, uh, but so. you know, so that, uh, to me, like I, I said, you know, I think that's one of the reasons some Hibs fans under Hecky were holding on to positivity. I think there's stuff there in that team especially under an exciting manager like Ross, maybe a couple of additions in January. I'm really excited for the uh, rest of the season. And back to the original question, yeah, I really think we can um, challenge for fourth or even third. Yep. Aye. I agree. Brilliant. Um, so we'll finish up there, guys. Uh, we'll be back next week to review the Levy game and talk about maybe do a January um, transfer window preview special, kind of talk a bit more about what we need. Maybe you can do your research and get some names. It's New Year. I might have a drink. Aye, yeah, probably going to be quite hungover. Yeah. I'll come on and talk, but research, nah. <laughs> I'm impressed with your research you've done the day, so. Done all right today. Oh, you did? Uh, yeah, thank um, you. Aye. So, what you've got planned for the night? What's football? Football. Aye. Football, bed, work in the morrow, so. Cool. You? My mate moved into a new flat. He was down at the the, the pub in, um, in the village, staying there now, but I think he's heading back home soon. I might go out see his new place and spend a bit of time with him. Just your best friend? No. No, oh, so just another f- Another friend. best friend, yeah. You've got loads of friends. Aye. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. No, I suppose you are all right. <laughs> right, we'll finish up there, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your Christmas and definitely enjoyed your Boxing Day. I know we did. We'll be back next week. Next Monday. Uh, no, not next Monday. When is it? The next, I won't be I'm not saying a day. You'll get me when you get next me. week. <laughs> we'll be back next week at some point because yeah. obviously it's a, bit, it's a difficult time. We'll be back next week yeah. at some point to do our Livy preview, uh, review and transfer window look ahead. Anyway, Subscribe and all that bollocks and we'll be back next week. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.